What's up, YouTube? So before we get started with this video, on the Stephen A. Smith show, which has Will Kane filling in for him, they're going to discuss how LeBron James received zero votes for being the best player of the year. So see what they have to say about that. So every year, there's this league executive poll around the NBA of opinions on various guys and teams and how their reputation currently sits. And it's pretty fascinating this year. ESPN.com has it up. Among 20 league executives, coaches, and scouts, they're asked, who is the best player in basketball? How many votes do you think LeBron James got? The answer is zero. 12 of the 20 voted for Kawhi Leonard as the best player in basketball. Six voted for Giannis Antetokounmpo and two for James Harden. Now, in the article, it suggests that had Kevin Durant been healthy, many of these executives would have voted for Kevin Durant. But nobody voted for LeBron James. I mean, is that really a, a shock that LeBron James didn't get votes for being the best player in the NBA? I mean, that shouldn't be surprising at all. Uh, like I said, I know he was hurt this year, but he didn't even make the playoffs. Didn't even make the playoffs. Like I said, I know he was hurt. But for the past eight years before he came to L.A., he was able to not only make it to the playoffs, but he was able to make it to the finals and do halfway decent. But his first year over in the West and with the Lakers, he gets hurt and they can't make the playoffs. You're definitely not going to uh, be voted the best player in the league. And if he was, that there'd be a major problem. Like I said, and all these other guys that balled out and could at least make the playoffs and make a deep run, if not win a championship, of course they're going to be voted for the, uh, being the best player in the league. Like Kevin Durant, I guarantee you, if Kevin Durant wasn't injured, he would definitely be the best, voted the best player in the NBA. But like I said, LeBron James didn't even make the playoffs, so it shouldn't be any surprise that he didn't get uh, best player of the year. And if anything, there would there'd be a serious problem if he did win player of the year when he was hurt a good portion of the time and didn't even make the playoffs. Something's wrong if he were able to get best player of the year. So let's continue. You know, here's the thing. We just had Alan from Long Island call in to say he respects me, he appreciates what I do or say, and then he didn't like me at first. It's funny. This is how it goes. But I find this constantly to be the case. About a year or two ago, I started to make the argument that Kevin Durant was approaching LeBron James as greatest player on the planet. My analogy was it was a NASCAR race, and the KD car had pulled up nose-to-nose -nose with the LeBron race. A year or so ago, I think it became clear that the KD car pulled ahead of the LeBron car, and everybody yelled, hot take, contrarian attention seeker and then time passes and because we move like herds because we're comfortable and safe in groups look how many people are saying the same thing you know i've been talked to a lot recently about likability it's like the goal in this industry is be a bunch of willie lomans like all we can do remember willie loman from death of a salesman is hope that you like us I actually find that very disrespectful to you, to you that's listening right now. You see, safe is likable. Don't rock the boat is likable. It's like everybody wants to be on a pond in a little canoe. Safe, tranquil, steady. Not me. I like the high seas. I want my boat rocking because that's the way the truth works. And I don't care how trite it sounds. I actually think you're deprived of the truth. I think people with this job, with these microphones, in every industry are doing you a disservice. They're constantly telling you lies. Sweet little lies, sometimes bold-faced lies. They're telling you lies in service of being liked by you. They don't want to take a risk. They don't want to tell you something you might not like. Something you might not believe. Because then you're not going to like them. And so they end up boring and safe. Don't get me wrong. Stephen A. Smith does none of this, and he has my eternal respect because of it. And he does it on both light and serious issues. The vast majority just want you to like them. And most people don't like the truth. They want to stick bombarded with their sweet, little, safe, anesthetizing lies. I'd rather tell you the truth. The truth as I see it. And I'm going to tell you what. You always get to give it to me back. If I tell you KD's the best player on the planet and you think it's wrong, you always get to call me. I don't live on the pond and act like I'm on the high seas. I don't live safe and act dangerous. You get to tell me how I'm wrong. And to me, telling you the truth and being wide open to you telling me that I'm wrong is respect. 
But Will Kane, this is this should really go without saying because you're a sports reporter. So you should be only reporting what you see. So it should go without saying that I'm only going to report the truth and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And I'm not going to lie to a player if he's doing uh, a bad, if I think he's if he's doing good or vice versa. So that should go without saying. You're, st- you're strictly there making documents of what is going on and then distribute it out to other people. So that should go without saying that you're going to not lie and sugarcoat or whatever the situation is you just explained. So, I don't know. Let's continue. To hell with likability. Why don't we give each other a little truth and respect? Might be better off for it. It's Will Kane filling in for Stephen A. You can normally catch me 3 to 6 Eastern. I brought that up. It was a side tangent to saying KD was better than LeBron. It could be, by the way, that it was just a hot take. Also, my voice sounds like Aziz Ansari and that I have the most punchable face in television. It could be. Well, I might say yes to all those things you just mentioned, especially the last thing. But as far as Kevin Durant being better than LeBron James, I have to say it definitely has to go to LeBron, uh, uh, to Kevin Durant. There's a. Uh, Kevin Durant is not last year, but the two-time defending champion and two-time MVP finals back-to-back beating the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James. At one point, shooting Le- LeBron James' eye out to, to seal a, a major win in the finals. So I don't I don't see how you could put LeBron James above uh, uh, Kevin Durant when he's beating twice in the finals. I mean, beat him out thoroughly. First one, he won 4-1, and then the second game, they swept him 4-0. So I don't see how he could not put Kevin Durant up there above LeBron James. And again, LeBron or Kevin Durant was able to make the playoffs unlike LeBron James. It doesn't matter what type of team they have. If they're the best player, the best whatever, you should be able to get your team to at least the playoffs. Because LeBron James was having a so-so year. Well, st- his stats were good, but he was having a so-so year dealing with his new team, his teammates, and being a leader, and everything that goes along with that. So definitely, he doesn't deserve to be the best player of the year. So I don't know. Let's, get, let's continue. Those things and not that whole truth thing I just did, but I'd like to tell myself it's the truth. I do have a punchable face. And I do wear shoes that some have said, why do you have some pink tennis shoes on and today mint tennis shoes? So there are other reasons you could dislike me, but I'm going to tell myself it's the truth thing until you tell me differently. 888-729-3776. I go on, though, in this NBA poll because it's not just who the best player on the planet is. How about this right here? 20 NBA GMs, execs, coaches, scouts, when asked who is going to win the NBA title this next season, said it like this. First of all, to win the West, the vast majority said the Los Angeles Clippers, then the Denver Nuggets, then the Utah Jazz, then, with the smallest amount of votes, the Houston Rockets. No Lakers in the East... So again, Will Kane, that, that should come as no surprise. Of course, LeBron James is a baller, and so is Anthony Davis, but they haven't played with each other yet. We don't know how that's going to work out. We don't know how it's going to work with coaching with Frank Vogel, even though Jason Kidd's his assistant coach. You don't know how all that's going to work out. And there's still issues with they need to find other players. They need to find some snipers to go ahead and take those long-range shots. So there's a lot of what-ifs going on with the Lakers still. We don't even want to talk about what's going on behind closed doors. So there's a lot of issues still left with the Los Angeles Lakers, no matter who's there with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And as far as the L.A. Clippers and Kawhi Leonard, well, he's, he's defending champion and defending MVP, uh, finals MVP. So why wouldn't you think that he's going to continue to do better? And he's, he's just signed on with uh, Paul George and they have uh, the, the good team, the good defensive team, really, that he has with the L.A. Clippers. He, so he's pretty much going to hit the ground running and be a contender directly coming from Toronto. So I would definitely pick... Um, you know, Kawhi Leonard to definitely have uh, outshine and do better than the Lakers and what LeBron James doing. Even though the Lakers look good on paper, but there's just still too many problems. Still too many problems. So let's continue. The Bucks and the Sixers. And for the NBA title, basically all of these guys voted for the Clippers with a minority voting for the Bucks. Again, no Lakers. I'm going to tell you something. This is another place I disagree. I think the Lakers are going to be right in the thick of this thing. I can't believe they get no votes. So I'm going to have to agree with you there, Wilson Kane. I think the Lakers should get a little bit more uh, respect than that, especially have not to have LeBron or not not to have Anthony Davis. So I think they should get a little bit more respect. But as far as having them win it all, I don't think so. I don't think you. Should, it, it's not far fetched that they say that there's no chance for them to win it all. But I do think they should get some type of votes because they are some type of quality of a team with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. I mean, they're going to be putting they're, they're going to be beating a lot of people put you like that but to have them say that oh they're gonna win it all you know I, i'm that's not surprising that they would say that but they do deserve some type of votes because it's not compare it's not a pure trash team so i don't know let's continue 
I think they got an interesting roster. I'm a little bit worried about where the shooting's going to come from, where the depth, how Boogie and AD and all that's going to work together. But you got to put the Lakers in the conversation.